Hi there, I'm Violet Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. So today one more video on strong and safe shoulders, looking at the anatomy of the region of the shoulder here. And in particular, today we're going to look at the collarbone, also known as the clavicle, and the upper ribs, right in here. Um, and how these can work together with the shoulder blade um, and the back ribs, actually the whole rib, rib cage, rib frame, to give easier movement into the shoulder that feels safe and that feels strong. Alrighty, so first of all, using Max the skeleton, um, I just want to show you the bones here a little bit here, because this is a really interesting region of the body. The clavicle, the collarbone here, is the only bone out of the whole shoulder region here, this region, that actually attaches to another bone. The clavicle comes in here and attaches to your sternum and does that right at the notch of the neck. These two little bones right here connect in and there's the sternum and there's the little points of each side of the clavicle. Then it goes out sideways. It's sort of like the axle of the car, right? You've got the main drive shaft up and down the body, and now we've got the axle of the car going out in two directions out to the side. And what it does is it joins with the top crest here of the scapula. It comes right together here in this joint, which then allows a little bit of movement here in relationship between these bones, this one and this one. So you can actually get this sense of a little bit of kind of like this and this. There's a little bit of squishy and wiggliness in there, but still having lots of structural support in here. And this together with the arm bones creates the yoke that can carry your arm bones around. And that, as I talked about in the other videos that I did just before this one, allows the arm bone to sit in this scapula and transmit force. So it actually allows everything to move around and have connection in through the bony part of the, the uh, body, through the skeleton, into the rest of the skeleton, as well as the scapula being connected with muscles down the back to connect through the muscles into the boniness of your body. The other thing that's really interesting is to notice that your ribs come right up underneath your collarbone here, right up into here. So for most people somehow think our ribs kind of end here, but they actually go up right in underneath here. So your ribs continue all the way up to give a beautiful um, frame here, a squishy frame, potentially squishy frame, to allow this all to move together to make shapes. And the idea is that the upper body can do some refinements, can do some sort of squishiness in order to keep your head on the horizon. So that your eyes can see what's going on, your ears can hear what's going on. Basically, you can keep track of what's going on, keeping your head up on the horizon, while your power comes from your lower body. So in our locomotion, ideally our legs and our pelvis and our lower back help us have good locomotion. And we have some of that going through the whole body because there's a spiral that works throughout the body. And then the fine tuning to be able to keep your shoulders on top and eventually your head on top is intended to come from all of this, not just in the neck but from your whole rib cage, shoulders, neck, um, team, all together. Now, if any one place in that team, or several places in that team, gets really stiff and stuck, what that means is that the other members of the team have to do more in order to keep the job of keeping the head up happening. So if the ribs, for example, get really tight and we get kind of like a box or a cage, instead of a squishy frame like ribs are meant to be. Um, then suddenly the stuff up higher than the ribs, the ribs can either move as a box and then the neck has to kind of compensate for that and move more. So briefly, playing a little bit with what you can do here. It's this idea that if the ribs can fold up a little bit, you can notice whether when you push with your arm, is there any sense that the ribs are folding or do your ribs stay really just sort of like a big box there? Right? And if it's possible that they could fold, what starts to happen? If you can imagine breathing out and finding out, can this actually fold and get a little softer here? 
so that then you start to have a little bit of movement to help make shapes in there. And then you can use that for when you want to reach. So for example, if I want to reach forward and go get a teacup over there or something, I could just reach with the arm. And if this is, this is not folding at all, then I've got less movement if it does fold. And if you want to roll over in bed or you want to roll over on the couch so you can reach the cheesies, this is really important. So let me just demonstrate this for a second. So for some people, it's really hard to roll over in bed. Right? Like if it, if somehow the shoulders get in the way. So if in part you can play with, is it okay to fold up the chest a little bit as you reach? So instead of reaching like this and feeling like I have to turn this as a big box, like my whole, whole chest has to move, is it possible to reach here and fold a little bit? So now I can kind of roll through my chest. It's like I can roll a little bit rather than feel like I get here and all of a sudden like it's this big heave ho lift of a big bread box instead of sort of a squishy bag of rice that you can pull over. And your clavicle has lots to do with it. So you can imagine the clavicles kind of leading a little bit. So I can feel my clavicle kind of moving back in space. I can find this side moving back while this one comes forward a little bit. And then if I want to do a shoulder check when I'm driving or something, I can imagine this clavicle going back. This one reaching across a little bit. Actually, it wouldn't reach across for a shoulder check. But if I wanted to reach for something over on that side of me, I can think of this moving back, this moving across, and now I can get there more easily than if I just try to move the box. Now I'm kind of stuck here. I don't even know where to go with this arm. But as soon as I can fold it up, I can go further. And all of this helps for shoulder strength because all of this helps you actually make more shapes with the whole shoulder region, the whole region we talked about. So now you can move the work through yourself in different ways, right? I can reach out for something so I can get it through my arm into my body rather than just having it stiff here, reaching here, and it kind of comes here and gets stuck, it stops, or it goes up into my neck. If I want it to connect through, it's got to go all the way through. If I want to carry a giant tray of beer or lemonade, uh, you know, Oktoberfest or something like that, I want to find out, can I get this through into myself rather than feeling like it gets stuck right in the joint? It doesn't have anywhere to go there. If I can actually lift something and allow it to come through, so my clavicle is turned, this is where you got that whole teen kind of doing a little bit like this, the shoulder blade goes down, the clavicle rotates, you get a little bit going on there, there's a little bit of movement there. Now this is set up to actually send the work through my body down to the bigger bones, down to the bigger muscles, and eventually, actually, into the ground to get the support from the ground, because the ground always can take the, the work, any work I give it. But that's a topic for another video. So, lots to play with here. Explore carefully, explore gently, play with what feels comfortable for you. If you've had any injuries, the movement's going to be quite small and your body's going to be quite careful, because you want to check any movement that you do, does it feel safe? Does it feel reasonable? And does it feel useful? Does your body think it feels safe, reasonable, and useful? What's your sense of it, your experience of it yourself? Regardless of what anybody else says or what you think you should be able to do, what's your actual experience of it? That's what matters. All right, if you have any questions or you'd like to get in touch, my website information is right below. I always love to hear from you and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. Happy exploring with this, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.